All right, so I've got a couple requests recently to go and do some more in-depth tutorials on materials and mapping in V-Ray for Rhino. So I've mocked up a quick scene here. I've got my sun in place. We're currently north looking south, if it makes a difference. So this would be kind of a afternoon sun that's coming in. I already have some materials in place. I have a concrete on the, the foundation here already applied. I have a dark kind of brushed metal applied to all the red, which is kind of steel, and also to the trusses here that's already been applied. And I have a glass material applied. Um, but the next thing I want to do is to come in and start to actually look at kind of advanced techniques for materials mapping within uh, the scene. One thing I know I want is a wood floor. And uh, although V-Ray comes with some uh, importable woods, if I do this here, None of them are, you know, kind of the floor I was looking for, so I'm going to have to create my own. So to do that, I'm right-clicking Scene Materials and adding a V-Ray material. I'm going to immediately rename that to Wood Floor. As I build up more and more textures, having an organization with everything being named is a really smart idea. So the settings I'm given right now are just for the diffuse map, and I can give a color to it, but that doesn't really matter. We're actually going to use a material map. So if I click M here, it brings up my texture editor, and I can select what type of material map it's going to be. I'm using a bitmap, which allows for bitmaps or JPEGs. And then I need to specify where the bitmap file lives. So here I've already set up a directory with a whole bunch of materials for myself, and I know that the diffuse map will be this wood plank material. So if I bring that in, uh, I can update it here, and I can see there's my wood planks. I'm going to apply that, and uh, I also need to do a bump map with that to add some life like qualities to the material. So again, I'm going to bring up the material editor, texture editor, select bitmap, specify where my bitmap lives, which is now the bump map file, and bring that in. One thing to note is that the U and the V and the rotation for the bitmap and the bump map uh, are exactly the same. So when I come to the wood floor and preview it, you can see that there's this really gnarled texture on the wood. So let's edit the bump map and reduce that to 0.02. This will give us a really fine kind of uh, texture to the floor. It looks fairly smooth. We can actually see a little bit of articulation at the joint, which is exactly what we're looking for. So with my object selected, which is just a box, I'm going to apply that wood floor. And then I'm going to do a test render. Great. So the wood floor is in place. Again, you can see kind of the dark metal and uh, the concrete here but everything else is still white, so I have a lot of work to do. Additionally, I'm not really happy with the wood floor running on the object this way, so that brings us to the first kind of issue of material mapping. Uh, there's several ways to tackle this, but probably the easiest in this instance is just to rotate the map. Also, the wood planks seem fairly large. This I know in my room I designed was 25 feet by 15 feet, uh, so I wanted to reduce that size. So if I come back to the material map, I'm going to click wood floor, and change my diffuse map settings. Um, I want to stretch this out and say that we're going to have more of them tiled, so I'm going to increase the U to 4, but I don't want to create, create a whole bunch of uh, kind of patchwork, so I'm not going to do 4 by 4, I'm just doing 4 by 1. You can see how it really elongates each of the boards. I'm also going to rotate it 90 degrees so we get the, the rotation that we run the boards with the length of the room. I have to make my bump map match that as well. So if I update the U to 4 and rotate 90 degrees and hit apply and I can do another rendering now and we'll see the wood planks are now running uh, the length of the room and look much more lifelike. The scale of them just feels right. So that's something you might have to play around with a couple times and test out, you know, how many tile, how many uh, divisions of U and V do I really want to have the planks the way I need them. So in the next video, we're going to move on to the walls, which are probably one of the more complicated things is we're trying to make it brick, and we have to have a uniform texture that wraps all four walls here. Uh, so that'll be up next.